Hey, what's up everybody? This is the brand new Lenovo ThinkPad X13S. I've been working with this machine now for a few weeks and I really like it. I think that it's a good proof of concept for the Windows on ARM environment. And part of the reason for that is that Lenovo focused squarely on the traveling business professional who doesn't need to consume a lot of data and doesn't need to open giant applications or anything like that. Really people who live in Microsoft 365 and also have a need really for a web browser to complement that. And in that case, in that environment, if you stick inside of that world as a user, you're going to be really happy and satisfied with this device. It has excellent battery life, and also it's thin and light, so it's easy to travel with. It's fanless, so you don't have to worry about you know, the, the fan spinning up in the middle of a meeting. The keyboard feels good. It tracks just like a typical trackpad, sorry, ThinkPad keyboard. And it, you know, it's not perfect, and I'll talk about that, particularly when we get to the trackpad. But overall, just want to kind of lay it out there. If you're interested in Windows on ARM, or maybe you're just interested in using the Microsoft ecosystem and getting good battery life, this is a laptop that will satisfy you. But it is not going to be a perfect one-to-one -one replacement of something like a Carbon, which I have you know, next to me here, and I'll show you that in a second or it's not gonna be innovative and different like you'll see on something like the Z series from Lenovo. So we'll talk about all those things after I give you a more in-depth overview of the laptop and talk to you about the specifications. So right off the bat, what you're looking at here may seem pretty standard to you. It's a ThinkPad keyboard with a ThinkPad layout such as the nub and the dedicated mouse buttons. But I'm gonna put this right next to a Carbon Gen 10 and X1 and hopefully now you can see some of those differences coming through. This is a totally new material I haven't seen before from Lenovo and it picks up grease just like you know you would expect but not quite the same way. It's less noticeable, uh, particularly dead on than what you see on the carbon and I'm trying to recreate the grease but you know fortunately I, I don't have greasy hands so I don't seem like a you know I don't know nasty dude at the moment but sometimes my hands are greasy and when they are Laptops like the ThinkPad tend to enjoy that grease. Okay, so what you're looking at here, like I mentioned, is a traditional ThinkPad layout, but it's not quite the same. The color scheme is a little bit different, being more gray than black. And so the trackpads have switched color as well. Instead of being gray, it's pure black. And instead of the mouse, dedicated mouse buttons being pure black, they are gray to match the chassis. I think this looks really good, and I have no complaints about it. It also feels good to type on and it retains your traditional ThinkPad layout of function and then control versus control and then function or no function whatsoever. Okay, all right, so specs. The ThinkPad X13S is ARM powered. It runs the Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3, which is clocked at three gigahertz. This model shipped with 16 gigs of RAM, but you can also get it up to 32 gigs of RAM. Every model has a 1920 by 1200 IPS anti-glare display, but the bottom end, which is a spendy $2,100 at full retail, that one has uh, just 300 nits of brightness, whereas the more higher end spec, which also supports a touchscreen, has 400 nits of brightness. And that's a gigantic difference. I think you'll be a lot happier with the 400 nits. And whether or not you need a touchscreen is sort of up to you, but if you're really just using this, Inside of what I said, again, that Microsoft 365 world, you're probably not going to need a touchscreen. I personally don't use a touchscreen, so it doesn't bother me at all whether it has one or not. This one, it does have one. This is the 400 nit model. Okay, other spec to call out is it has a one terabyte PCIe SSD Gen 4. Every trim, every model will have that. The prices range from about $2,100 to about $2,600. However, that's the... MSRP. If you're going to buy this, you're probably going to get it on sale. That's just how Lenovo does business, and they have sales pretty regularly. This is a fanless design. It's also quite small, just 2.35 pounds. The thickness is a staggering just 0.53 inches. Now, it's not the thinnest laptop that I've ever had in the shop here, but it's really darn thin, and I love the layout here. So putting this up against the ThinkPad, which I need to get in frame, here we go. You can see that the ThinkPad has a, tr a classic wedge-shaped design, whereas the new X13 retains the same thickness throughout the entire device, 
which I think looks really good. Now the I.O. does suffer. Instead of having all this wonderful I.O. that you see on the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, you have just the two USB-C ports, no HDMI, no Thunderbolt, no USB-A, which would be great for a traditional traveling professional, but it's not there. There is a SIM tray, Kensington lock, and a headphone jack, and here you'll see on the X1, you have another USB-A port. So, put that X1 away because now we're gonna focus really just on this X13S. So, this supports both 4G and 5G bands. I pretty much had 5G the whole time that I was using it, and I ran my battery tests in two different ways. I ran it with only Wi-Fi enabled, and I ran it with only 5G enabled. Now, what I got was pretty close. I got 18 hours and 45 minutes of battery life in my video playback test with just the cellular. In more detail, that playback test was at 50% brightness and 40% volume. On my Wi-Fi test, I got 18 hours and six minutes. So only Wi-Fi, 1080p playback, 50% volume, sorry, 40% volume, 50% brightness. Now, Lenovo claims 28 hours of video playback at 1080p, but with only 150 nits of brightness, which would have been lower. <laughs> I did 200 nits of brightness, but I figure these things are really hard to use at 150 nits, at least for me, so I wanted to make it match. And yeah, the battery life is really good, but it's nowhere near Lenovo's claims, but that's also pretty normal in the Windows laptop world. Okay, not a good excuse, I totally get that, but it's just sort of the reality. I like the design of this a lot. I already mentioned the materials and how I'm a big fan of it, but it, it looks a lot like a regular Lenovo laptop, but there's another key difference here that's gonna be hard to pick up on camera. So if you look at something like the X1 Carbon, it's very flat on the top, which is good. Nothing wrong with that. On the new X13S, it rounds here on the sides. In fact, all the corners round as well. So even though on the sides, you know, it's this nice flat, you know, single width all the way across, it also has a nice curvature to it, which I think looks really cool. And you know what, I'm just gonna take a moment to give you a nice, slow overview of the entire chassis, because I feel like a lot of the reviews that I watch, they don't do that, and I don't do enough of it either. So here you go. This thing is really, really pretty. I just love this design. What a great job Lenovo did on this thing. I mean, I have to say something while I'm spinning a laptop really slowly, all sexual and stuff. Okay, that was awkward. All right. One new design element is this new top notch. Well, here's the thing, folks. <laughs> These microphone arrays and camera arrays, for whatever reason, whether it's on the Mac or on a Windows machine, requires this additional space. I don't get it, I'm not an engineer, but I believe all these different companies because it's pretty consistent. So instead of cutting into the display like Apple does, well, Windows doesn't support that as far as I know. At least they don't have any reason to. So instead, we have a top notch. Hang on, I'm just logging in real quickly with Windows Hello facial recognition. All right. And in, the, in, in that regard, you have a bit of a bump here. Now, if you're a ThinkPad loyalist, you're used to having some bezels. It's not uncommon, right? It's pretty darn standard. But you, you do get a nice thin bezel on the sides and on the bottom, so that's good, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. But you do have one up here, so just, it is what it is, right? Can't change it. Maybe in the future it'll get better, I'm sure it will. Things always get smaller, so that's just life. But anyway, for right now, you don't have a, a notch in cut out to worry about, but you do have the top notch. Now, one thing that disappoints me is that you cannot disable the camera through a toggle or a software switch or even just a thin piece of plastic like you can on other Lenovo laptops. So that's a bit of a disappointment, but again, that's how it is. I wish they would have changed that. So opening apps, again, if you stick to applications that are written for the ARM silicone, right? They're, they're written that way. They're gonna open pretty fast. So Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all open as just individual applications in under four seconds, which is a key thing for me when I review laptops. Opening files that have some heft to them also open pretty quickly, definitely faster than what I experienced on the Mac OS, because for whatever reason, Mac OS is just really slow to do that. So yeah, you won't really notice a difference between a traditional x86 ThinkPad and this ThinkPad if you stay inside of that space. And even from a browser perspective, Edge, Brave, Chrome, they all have 
ARM versions, and they're easy to download and install. Now, I'm not sure what other applications may be common here for people to use in the business space. Again, Microsoft, or rather, Lenovo have targeted the traveling professional, people who are on trains, planes, and Ubers all the time, and they want something with good battery life, that's thin and light, uh, they're going to board meetings, they're traveling around. In that case, I think those people pretty much stick in the 365 space, but I'm not entirely sure. You know, Teams is another application that I used on this pretty regularly in addition to the, the other Microsoft apps. And everything had it worked great. I had no compatibility issues. But if you want to install, man, if you want to do some coding on this, install a bunch of different compilers, I don't think that's going to work. Or if it does, it may require some kind of workaround that's awkward to deal with. And I just don't know that space very well. I just wanted to run this from my perspective, which is someone who just uses the Microsoft apps and a couple of browsers. And in that regard, it was seamless and it worked really well. Okay, things I would change. Number one, it needs a camera shutter. This is not any kind of order. So camera shutter, much brighter display would be preferred. I'd also like to see it with a glossy finish instead of this matte finish, because I feel like that does bring out the colors more, but that and the, at least with Lenovo machines, you tend to get a lot of reflections, a lot of glare. So that could be a problem, but they can do an anti-glare or low glare glass finish. I'd like to see how that looks. And the trackpad. So I'm gonna put up here on the left, the trackpad on the new Z13S. Now this is a totally different type of laptop. It's a consumer grade laptop instead of professional grade from Lenovo. And Lenovo didn't have to worry so much about military spec on this new Z series. So they had more room to work with, even though they're both 13 inch displays. And in doing so, they implemented this new trackpad that is really cool. It has you know magnets on the bottom, kind of like what you see on the MacBooks or the new XPS 13 plus. So you can click anywhere and you can control how thick it is to click and all that fun stuff. But one of the cool things is you have more room now. So on the ThinkPad here, the X13S, I felt like this space, it's just too small. You get more room here because they don't have to worry about physical mouse one, two, and three buttons. They can simulate it through a software. So that's really cool. And I wish that that would come to the X series. And I wouldn't be surprised if instead of pursuing more of these X13s, if Lenovo instead goes the other way and brings ARM to the Z series. So I think this design overall is, I think it's way more boardroom-like. It just looks really good. I mean, you can kind of see some of that here where, you know, they highlight the notch with this gold or bronze kind of finish. And it's the same idea of having flat design, but in the case of the Z series, it's aluminum all the way across. You know, I do get that people see a ThinkPad, a lot of people do, and they think, they do think boardroom and they think professionalism and stuff like that. but if you've got this nice leather finish with the ThinkPad logo and a cool bronze accent, all aluminum otherwise kind of staring at you versus this, I, I think you may find, the average person will find that this is even more professional. So anyway, just throw that out there. It really depends on the user and stuff like that, but I think this is a gorgeous machine. I'd love to see it either running ARM or at least getting such great battery life, 15 plus hours, 16 plus hours in day-to-day -day use. That would be really, really cool. Okay, so that's your X13S. Really cool device, glad Lenovo brought it to the table and I really appreciate that let me do a review on this. I think that if they do continue to mature this product, that by Gen 2 and Gen 3, if we get bigger trackpad and get to that camera shutter and some sharper displays that are brighter, I think this can really start to make some headway. I think it will attract people and it will get some attention because if you're if you're an IT purchasing person and the, the boss is coming to you and they're saying, hey, we need some laptops, we need some more ThinkPads, right? You gotta stay in the ThinkPad world and we need them to have better battery life and really just using them for Microsoft Office Suite, this would be an easy product to recommend. It's around the same price, if not cheaper than a Carbon, and it's gonna be just as durable, it appears and it's gonna have better battery life. So why not go for it? And you might really make some people happy and then word will spread. So in that case, Lenovo has a chance here to corner the business world, the business market on ARM, which would be you know, kind of an interesting thing to see. I don't see anyone else doing this. I know Microsoft tried it with the Service Pro X, but as far as I can tell, I mean, I've never seen a Service Pro X out in the wild, ever, not once. 
people have think pads. I see the carbons, I see the T series, and sometimes I see you know Dell XPS 15, I definitely see Max. I just I don't see the Surface Pro Max anywhere ever. Anyway, this was a good experience. Thanks, Lenovo, and thank you all for watching. Cheers.